So let's get you on your back here. Head on the pillow, please. And let's get you set up here. So uh, you can put your arms down to your side. It's gonna feel for your hip here, okay? okay. And then I'm gonna roll your left leg in. Good. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Hold still there. All right. Hold very still there. So. Hold still there. I'm just gonna feel for your hip, okay? Good, and rotate that leg in. All right, okay, hold still there. Okay, so. Continue to keep that leg still. Okay, so now you're going to uh, bend your knee halfway up and then uh, drop it down halfway to your left. Good, all right, that's good. Right, so now you're gonna take a scoot towards me and then go ahead and then you're gonna roll onto your left away from me and then you're gonna bring your right leg over you you're gonna bend that knee use that as a kickstand bring your left leg back a little bit if you can good hold still there good almost done all right all right hold still there All right, man, we're all done. Okay, so um, are you able to bend your knee at all? Uh, yeah. Oh, your left knee, uh, are left you? Knee, no. Yeah, no? Okay. All right, so that's all right. We'll just work around you then, okay? Feel for your hip here. Okay, let's cross your arms high across your chest there. Good. All right. Just gonna push you a little bit here. So with your good leg, your right leg, can you bend your knee up towards yeah. you? And I'm gonna put it in this holder here, okay? All right, doing okay there? Yeah. All right, great.
All right, hold still. And then almost done. You doing okay? I'm good. All right, almost done. Still there. All right, we're all done. Let me uh, move everything out of here. So what I'm doing here is just demonstrating how I get the room ready for a femur. You do not want to bring the patient in and then get the room set up. Sure, as you get more experience, you can get away with it. But even then, I still like to get the room ready before my patient comes in, just because it makes the experience more professional, clean, and efficient. Get into a solid, more efficient routine for each exam sooner than later, and it will all become second nature, as you will be reinforcing more good habits earlier on, rather than trying to snap out of bad habits later on. Now that my patient is on the table, I detent my tube to the table bucky. If you can't see the bucky, push away the table. I feel for the ASIS on the affected side. A mid receptor is lengthwise in the bucky. The top of the collimation light should start at the ASIS. This will clip the crest, but remember, you do not need to visualize the iliac crest of the hip for a Femur. Don't forget to internally rotate the leg so we can visualize the femoral neck. Next, I still need to get the distal portion of the femur, so I need to patch. To do this, I was taught two ways, either with my fingers or a marker. Whichever is fine, just as long as you have overlap of the femur. To make sure there's overlap, be sure that your fingers or marker are in the collimation light when you position for both your proximal and distal femur. Now we need a view of the proximal femur, AKA the hip. I made a dedicated video for the hip a while back that you can view here. So there are several ways to image the lateral hip. However, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the two most common ones. The frog leg position, AKA modified cleaves method and the cross table or surgical lateral projection, AKA Danilius Miller method. First, we'll go over the frog leg position. This is used when there is no suspected fracture or trauma, or in other words, when your patient's chief complaint is pain, but they did not fall or injure themselves. I have my patient bend their knee halfway up, which is about 45 degrees, and then abduct the femur laterally halfway, which is again about 45 degrees as well, not all the way down flat. If you do lay the femur flat, the femoral neck will not be visualized. It will be superimposed by the greater and lesser trochanter. However, depending on what the ordering doctor wants to rule out, this may or may not matter. They may be more concerned about the joint space to rule out arthritis. In this case, the femoral neck isn't so much of an interest. I then feel for the bend in the patient's hip. This is where the femoral head is. I want to position this area closest to the border of the collimation light. Turn the tube so it's going with the length of the femur and then collimate. Now we need to patch the distal part of the femur. Since we are doing the left leg, I have my patient scoot over towards me and then tell them to roll away from me onto their left side. I tell them to swing their right leg over their left and use that right leg as a kickstand. I feel for the patella to see if I need to adjust the femur in a true lateral. To do this, I put two fingers on the medial and lateral side of the patella to determine if it's perpendicular or not to the table. I then roll the patient's leg accordingly. Last, I get the knee joint closest to the border of the collimation light. 
turn the tube to follow the length of the femur, and then collimate. Now for the cross table lateral. This is used when there is a suspected fracture, rule out fracture, injury, or trauma to the hip. You do not want to bend the hip into a frog leg position. You leave the leg alone and work around it instead of manipulating it. This also works only if the opposite leg is able to be moved out of the way. In rare situations, both hips cannot be manipulated. Do you know what plan B is when that situation arises? Leave your answer down below in the comments section and you may get a lucky surprise. So I first get a grid holder to hold the grid. And this might sound funny, but make sure the image receptor is in the grid. Believe it or not, this can happen. And uh, it has happened to me many, many, many moons ago. It's happened to you too, right? Preferably, I recommend the grid holder on wheels. The one that you can float next to the table, not the tabletop one. The reason being is that with the holder on wheels, you can position it off the table to the side and adjust the table, the patient table, so that your patient and the air of interest is in the center of the grid. This results in little to no chance of clipping the posterior anatomy and if your patient is on a mat, there is no reason to build up the patient's hip. If you do use the tabletop holder, you must prop up the patient's hip or else it will be too low on the grid, resulting in decreased quality and increased chance of clipping the posterior anatomy. Now enough of grid holders, let's get back into positioning. To find where I need to position my image receptor, I feel for the iliac crest. Make sure you jab your finger in there. Actually feel for the crest. Don't be shy and just lightly touch your patient. This is why you continue to position poorly. Trust me. Now once you find it, this is where the edge of your image receptor will be. I tell my patient to cross their arms high across their chest so their arms are out of the way. And lift the table up so that my patient's hip will be into the center of the image receptor. I push the patient closer to the grid to minimize OID and magnification. As you can see, there is still plenty of OID. I can either have my patient scoot over more since the mat is as far as I can push it, or even better, I can make use of what I know about the air gap technique and increase the SID to make up for the OID. I then create a rough collimation. Move the sensor ray where it roughly will be. Then I prop my patient's unaffected leg up. Lastly, I will make last minute refinements before I image my patient, such as moving the tube, the matching the grid to the tube, and then collimating. This is my preferred workflow order because my patient's leg will be in an uncomfortable position the least amount of time, resulting in less time for patient movement compared to propping my patient's leg up first and then having them hold it up there for an increased length of time, increasing the chance of their leg falling down. Aim for the crotch. Make last minute refinements and shoot. Now we gotta hurry and x-ray the distal femur. Checking your patient, make sure they're doing okay. If they need to put their leg down to rest, then do so. Then move on when they are ready. There's nothing too complicated here, just move everything down the leg. Move the bucky down, make sure you have some overlap, and then match the tube to the bucky. Whew. Now that is how you x-ray a femur. And mind you, these are the more common ways. There are still several other ways you can image the femur. Now I know there's a lot going on in this video, so if you have any questions and or comments, leave them down below. In my experience, students and techs have the most trouble with cross table lateral hips. Fortunately for me and my last job location, their protocol for any ER hip was to be done with a cross table lateral projection. It didn't matter if they could walk or there was no trauma. So since I interned there and was a tech there for my first three years, I got really efficient and proficient with my cross table lateral hips. But let me remind you that it did not happen overnight. It happened with plenty and plenty of repetitions and many and many 
trial and errors until I refine my workflow into what it is today. And even then, it is still not perfect. There are times when I'm off, but I'm as efficient as I can be and I know exactly how to fix my repeat. This comes with time and experience. So if you're not getting it now, please, please, please do not be too hard on yourself. Now, if you found this video helpful, press that like button, subscribe for my expert content, and share this video with others who may find it valuable. Head over to expertrate.com and grab yourself a technique card when you need that ballpark technique in the clutch. And also check out the clothing section and cop some merch if you are so inclined to. My new merch with my new branding is up or should be up by the time of this upload. Just in time for Rad Tech Week next month in November. Please let your fellow Rad Techs and Rad Tech students know. Email me, tag me with your photos with the merch and I'll be sure to repost it and feature it in a future video. I'm so excited to see how you like the new look, to see it out there in all the hospitals around the world. One of my dreams was to have my own clothing brand and it is surreal to have something similar with my logo being worn by my peers in my profession around the world. This is just another example that you can do anything if you want it. If you really want it, you'll find any way to make it happen. Because you have greatness within you. I'll see you at the top. My name is Ray and I'll be taking x-rays. I love. Peace.